Welcome to Americana Quilt, writer to writer. Please like and subscribe and tell a friend that likes to subscribe. Today, my guest is a, is a lady who is a newbie who is in the final stages of putting some finishing touches on her debut book, Captive in Plain Sight, that chronicles some important and deep moments in her life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome Danitza Robertson. Hi, everyone. Like Brain said, I'm Danitza Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. You know, just happy to, you know, talk to you and see how you're doing. As I see, <laughs> you're doing good, it looks like. Yeah. All is well, considering everything that's going on, right? So. Yes. Absolutely. So I guess my first question that I like to ask since we're in this time of uncertainty, how's your family and during the times of the pandemic? Well, thank God my family is doing well. Um, you know, obviously economically and financially, right? Things got a little crazy for us, but that goes for everyone else, um, right? In the entire world. So it was a little difficult, um, but thank God, you know, we were able to come together and deal with things that we needed to deal with in order to survive in this craziness. Um, and, as, and as you know, I have a 12 year old daughter. So that yeah. was a little challenging for myself because, you know, explaining, all these things that are going on and you know how she needs to take care of herself and now she's going to school virtual um that's been that's been a big job but thank god all's been well and we're healthy so right well that's beautiful so i guess my first question is that you being a new author does writing naturally energize you or does it exhaust you no it energizes me it definitely brings this beautiful um hard out of me you know it definitely is within my own time where I'm focused um you know when I'm done sometimes I could be done in 20 minutes sometimes I could be done in an hour or three but when I am done I feel this relief um so it's been very self-therapeutic for me so um yeah it's been it's been good it's, it's a good energy I don't feel exhausted although I've had moments where I'm writing a chapter that's very difficult for me and I have gotten emotional and that could exhaust me a little bit because um, I'm just reflecting back on those stories. So at though in those moments, yes. But overall, I definitely feel like a butterfly and I feel free and great. And so um, it's a good feeling. So definitely it brings me peace and good energy. Well, that's great. Um, what do you like to do when you're not writing? Like what is your, your process, I guess, before you even start writing? So normally, um, for some reason, I just wake up in the morning and I just, I get inspired of just thoughts that go through my mind in the morning. Um, I'm not this totally religious person, but I do have, you know, a great relationship with God. So in the mornings, you know, I pray every morning um, and depending on my day, I just get inspired by something um, and it brings me to wanting to start to write. Um, there's a lot of times where I may not have the time to write, but I'll jot something down or I'll write it in my notes in my phone just because I want to keep that as a reminder, like I want to put this part in my book. Um, but definitely, you know, in the morning, I'm inspired to write. It's just something that comes to me naturally. Yeah, I think the morning time is perfect for like those early downloads of just a, a clear thought before your day gets distracted with just natural life. And there, from the, there, there's like moments of, of uniqueness that you can always add into a book or a, a conversation that you might have thought about from a childhood time or something right. like that. Yeah, so yeah I, there's, times, there's definitely um, times as well where I mean, I have the time in the morning to write or in the afternoon because I might be working or I'm focusing on my daughter's studies or just something. But I definitely try to at night to go back, right, and rejuvenate those thoughts. And so, um, it could be a day or it could be two, but as long as I have it in my notes, it just reminds me to go back to that. Um, and there's times where I want to go back to sleep and just have a natural day to sleep, but I just have these thoughts in my mind that I just get up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep and so I'll start writing. Um, right. You know, everybody's process is a little different. This is my first time literally writing, so I'm learning as I go through my process. Right. No, yeah, it takes a while to know what your process is because just everything's for the first time. So I can totally understand that. Yeah. So although you're writing a memoir and like a nonfiction, what do you think makes a good story? 
What makes a good story? Um, I believe that you have to you have to captive you have to capture your audience, right? Um, a good story is someone reading a page and not wanting to like stop reading because they're just like so into it. Um, and then there are times where you have to read a little bit more, right, to capture and want to read more. Um, but I, I find it that for myself, when I have read other people's books, there are times where I read, I'm starting to read and I'm like, I don't want to let this book go. And I just want to spend the whole day reading and just finishing it in one day. That's a good book. Right. <laughs> you know, that makes me, a good book. A good no, book. absolutely. Unless I, literally, unless I literally have to stop reading because there's a million things going on and I have to prioritize. It's a beautiful thing to be able to read a book and just be captive and just want to finish it and just so interested and want to know what's more, what happens and just all these little details, you know, because you're, you're hungry to want to know. And it's just, um, it's a good feeling as a, as a reader for myself that I find myself doing that. You want to have a book that's always trying to make you want to turn the page, the next page. So no, yeah, I feel the same way. And that's how I, I try to write is to make sure that the person wants to at least get to the next chapter. If I could get them to get to every chapter to the time they finish the book and they feel like they didn't even spend that much time, I feel like that's my success is right. if you can get them to do that. So Right, right. Yeah, it's it's super important. Um, you know, you wanna you wanna be able to go through a book and and just feel it and just, you know, when you're reading, for me, a lot of times I'm very visual. So I just visualize things. And if you get my attention where I can visually see these scenes happening, then you just got my attention and I just want to finish it. Um, but again, everyone is different, right? And so, and everyone, right. you know, everyone gets certain things differently than um, others. I just, I, I would hope and think that maybe the majority would probably say the same that once you start reading the flow of things, you don't want to let a book go if it's really good. Right. And I think reading is probably the most important toolbox for a writer. Like you just have to read. There's no other ways around it. It's like, you can't say you're a writer and you don't read books. No matter right. what the book is, I just think it just helps your process. It's, it's like a weird thing. It's, I don't know how, it just, it just is what it is where you have to read to write better. Yeah, and I will mention that um, I am guilty of having some audio books. <laughs> So, no, 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 no. It's nothing wrong with that either. But like, it's just something about your mind working those things out somehow yeah. with it. So I do have some audio books, um, but I have to tell you, the feeling of holding a book and just sitting there and just having that moment versus being in your car and listening to the audio, um, it's so different, right? And I feel like I kind of just want to skip the process and I want to go audio because maybe I don't have time to sit down and read the book. And I'm just like, I just want to read this. I want to hear it and see what it's about. Right. And then it gets to a point where I'm like, you know what, after I did the audio, like I want to purchase the book and read it and just like, you know, see how both of them work. I don't know. It's just weird, but I just want to see if the audio matches, right. What I'm reading and, and the storyline right. is all the same way. And so it changes the mood if you know from when you're reading it in your head and you hear someone else reading it and the way they might project it. So no, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So with you saying about books, what's the last book you might have read that's fiction? And then give me one book that you might have read or listened to that's nonfiction. Oh, you got me there. <laughs> and I say that only because um I've I've been working so hard on my book and I have been having challenges on it. Um, yeah. A lot of it has been emotional because my storyline starts with me being the age of 12. Um, my daughter turned 12 this year. And so it's been very difficult for me to focus and read a book when I really should be working on myself and working on my book, right? Um, there is this one book. Let me just look oh, at Oh, take your book. time. Absolutely. Just quickly because I just want to... Um, I didn't read the whole, I didn't read the book entirely, but I was reading it and it was um, really interesting. You might, you may have heard of it. Um, it's called Big Magic. No. Um, it's, about creative, it's about creative living beyond fear. And it has mm. to do with a female that started her process of writing. So I started reading it and it was just like mind blowing and it was great. It is a great book. Um, and it has a lot, I don't know, I, as a female, right? I feel like I could relate to her in some ways um, as a writer because she was a first time writer as well. So 
that, that, that has been one of the books that I'm in the middle of. And then my other book that I've been in the middle of is by um, Wayne W. Um, Dyer. And it's called the, um, it's called the um, Euronian Zones. That's interesting. That's, I never heard of that. That's, um, it's been out for quite some time. It's right. more of personal growth. Um, mm -hmm. and how to, and how to focus on yourself and how, to, and how that, and, and how to say that sometimes it's okay to be selfish when you think about yourself and going through a process, you know, whatever it is, financially, work, family, relationship, anything. It's really about a process that you're going through in regards to just putting yourself first. And it's okay to say that, you know, you like eating good things, that you like good things, that you want the best because you're just putting that out in the energy and that just brings good, you know, um, that just brings good energy to you. So that's, um, those are the two that I've been working on. I haven't finished right. them, but I'm working on them. No, that's super dope though. Yeah, the book, I, I just finished a book actually late last night um, called Revenge in the Capital. It's actually from um, a, a new author called B. Ivy Woods and it's like a series. It's, it's interesting. It's kind of like, it's like a, a local Olivia Pope kind of like of um, Scandal. Oh. I think that's the name okay. of the show. So yeah, it's kind of like got that vibe to me. And it's like romance. So it's something yeah. different that I don't normally read, but it's something that, you know, I would recommend to those that are into like those type of books that are into like kind of thinking. It's cute. It's not overly, you know, dramatizing romance, but it's, it's good. It's a good read for anybody. So it's, that's fiction. I have to, look, I have to look into it. Yeah, and then I'm also listening to an audio book from Stephen King about like his writing process and like different things like that. So that's that's interesting since I'm trying to get into like writing crime books. So like seeing his thought process and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. Um, I definitely feel like any beginner writer for myself or any writer, I think it's always good to um, read or listen to someone else's process. Um, because sometimes you need that feedback, you know, and it's nice to hear that you can relate to other people. Sometimes for myself, I would question myself as a writer. I would question certain things like, am I done? Or, um, do I need to add more takeaway? And so I, I had, um, yeah, I, had, I, mean, I had time of, you know, just kind of fighting myself with that a little. Yeah. But we've had those conversations off, off this platform where we talked about just different nuances of just knowing. Right. You feel it when you finish, right? It's like, it's okay to like extend it for part two at a later date. It don't all have to be in, in one book. So we've had those conversations. So yeah, it's something that I think every writer is like, it's like a feeling. There's no right or wrong answer, but you don't want to overwrite where you're like disturbing your reader from wanting to finish the book. You don't want them to feel intimidated also. So it's a fine balance. And me being able and being honored to like read your first draft, I think you're almost there. Like, I think you really got a lot of it there. Yeah, it's been a process. It's been a process. But oh, it's, you're it's, amazing. It's been a good process. You know, it's been it's been good. It's been challenging. Um, I've learned a lot through through my journey of writing. Um, as you know, you know, my purpose for it. Um, so so yeah, it's, it's been good. I would just say for those that whenever you do release the book, it's a needed, it's a needed read. Like it, it will put a lot of things in perspective of not just your journey, but like a lot of different women's journey, you know? And yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I was um, having a great conversation with an amazing friend and um, through prayer, I was just saying how, you know, I just ask the Lord to guide me through my process because you know, only he knows where my heart falls with me writing this book. And it, it's not only for me, it's not only for my daughter, but it's for, you know, all of the young women out there that could relate to my process. And, you know, if I can help at least one girl in the million, I think I've done a lot and I would be definitely happy with that. So, yeah. I don't think you could, I think you could also help young, young men just understand there's things that we will never understand. So it's like an insight of, of, of those thoughts that you might have had then as a that men can now be more sensitive to if they took the time to read your book so i think that's important too although i know you're targeting probably just women reading it i think a lot of smart men if they if they want to they should pick up your book as well and understand how to be sensitive to not just what is happening inside of a woman's journey in those moments just being more sensitive overall to our, our female counterparts Absolutely, absolutely. You know me, I'm definitely a feminist and I find it that um, it's beautiful to hear men that, you know, look into 
another, you know, a, a woman's story or is interested and, you know, remember they came from a woman and if they have daughters, right. they have nieces, you know, um, it's very interesting. And I definitely respect those that, you know, are interested because they can benefit. I feel like anyone can benefit from this book, even young men, you know, because I right. find that although... I'm writing about a story, my story um, as a female, there are young men that went through the same experience and haven't spoken about it, you know, so. Or they might have.